Hey everyone, welcome back to Vintage Scrap and Stitch. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Fire King glassware. Um, well known predominantly right now for its popular kitchenware items, but also known for its often overlooked dinnerware and bakeware patterns. So let's take a look and jump right in. First up, let's take a look at reference material. Uh, these are invaluable resources created by some extremely knowledgeable and experienced uh, glass dealers over the years. Um, actually spent time in the plants, uh, in the manufacturing companies, in the businesses that were selling the glass, with the artists, the creators, with the scientists involved in the production of the glass. Excellent resources, and all of them are currently out of print. So you'll have to look on the secondary market for these. These are invaluable when it comes to identifying pieces. Price guides are probably not a good identifier at this point because we all know that the pieces, the current market is what is driving the price for them. Um, but first up is a 1991 uh, Fire King glassware book. This is by Gary and Dale Kilgo and Jerry and Gail Wilkins. Um, you do wanna take a look at these two if you're searching for them. A lot of these books were autographed by the author and we're fortunate to have known these folks and have their autographs on this first edition. Excellent resource, specifically on Anchor Hawking and Fire King. Does not have every piece manufactured listed, but has a great reference and is a great starting point. Uh, next, you're probably familiar with Jean Florence, who produced a lot of depression glass books, ventured into 40s and 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s books, and also a solid kitchenware book. So the 40s, 50s, and 60s was kind of a bridge between um, Fire King dinnerware, McKee dinnerware, um, luncheon sets and so forth, and crossed over into the production of the uh, 60s glassware, including Indiana glass and some of those. Kitchenware is exactly what it says it is. It is all kitchenware glass um, by all companies. These are probably, this book is probably the most comprehensive book um, or these are, there are several editions of them. This is a 2001 version. Um, they're probably the most comprehensive reference um, on the market today. And when it comes to confirming an item, these are our go-to resources. We do not count on the internet um, for references because of reproductions and so forth. We do count on our uh, reference books, which we have an accumulation of um, to earmark and to um, identify. And once you become familiar with a specific glassware company, you also begin to be able to identify their uh, different design shapes, um, commonalities, and so forth. The last book I'll point out is Mousy's Depression Glass book. It does say Depression Glass. It is the sixth edition from 2009, and it is a thick book. Um, Barb includes a ton of Depression Glass, but she also crossed over into Fire King and um, some of the other dinnerwares that are listed in the Fire King book as well as in Florence's 40s, 50s, and 60s book. This book and some of the Elegant Depression Glass books, you'll also see a hawking pattern which is identified as Fire King. And I wanna point that out to you here. You probably saw some of it in the um, main photo there. It is, it is identified as Philby Fire King Dinnerware but it was created by the Hawking Glass Company. So a lot of people confuse this with Fire King and lump it into the Fire King um, 
manufacturing status and it is actually not. Um, we are fortunate to have some of our pieces, which you'll see later on in the video, in this featured in this book. And uh, we're always happy, we were happy to contribute to this as well. So be aware, use the references. Um, don't always take everything that's online, including this video, <laughs> as a solid resource. Do your legwork, do your research before you identify and announce. And know that all of the pieces that are manufactured that are coming out now are not going to be in these books. You have to rely on your source and um, uh, trust that they have done their homework, that they're giving you the, the, the correct information and go from there. All right, share your favorite resources below. Happy, happy to uh, learn more about what's available. And there are many more out there. I just wanted to show you our favorites. Okay, first up, Let's take a look at Fire King versus Hawking Fire King. And I have an entire video, which I will link, um, going into great detail about these two patterns and their confusion with other patterns. But I wanted to touch upon it here because we're still getting a lot of questions about it. So on the left-hand side, you see two pieces of Fire King Philby dinnerware, a juice saver pie plate. And if we zoom in here, you'll see it is actually labeled on the bottom, Fire King. And then we have one of the, one of my favorite, I can't help myself with these. It's a deep custard cup. They're just absolutely, uh, I love them for snacks, for custard, but for some other things. Um, they're, they're great for a lot of things. Um, you can see this one has a double stamp mark on it. One is kind of on the diagonal and one straight across, but it's also reverse. So to read it, you actually have to look from the inside to read it correctly. So those are both the Fire King Overwear, Ovenwear Philby pieces in Philby blue. And if you take a look at the design on these, you can see there's a band, a beaded band with a, um, a little crest and then the medallion in the center. So moving over to Hawking's Philby, you see that they are, I actually have three colors here today and it's actually made in crystal as well. Um, I'm not sure if there's any amber or yellow in this. That's not a piece that we have yet, but you can see if I hold the Fire King piece, the Philby piece up, you can see it has the same teardrop on it. The beaded band is the same, but the crest is different. The blue color is also different. And again, the Philby on the left, the Philby blue on the left was meant to be used to be placed in the oven. This is a dinnerware line. It was used for meals, drinking out of, eating off of, um, and meant to be used in that manner. Um, I know someone's going to ask, is this uranium glass? And let's just see. My bet is yes, it's going to have a little glow. And you can see that uh, on the bottom. I don't have the dark light here, but it does glow. It's depression era, so there would be uranium in that. But I just wanted to, to clarify again, Fire King Philby oven, ovenware on the left, it is marked different blue and the, the Hawking Philby dinnerware on the left. All right, shout out with any questions below. Time to move on to Fire King kitchenware. All right, so let's talk about Fire King kitchenware. And I have just a sampling in front of me, but I do have a sampling of a very rare, uh, very limited run KitchenAid's bowl in blue. More commonly found in the red, you can pull a complete set together of the red together, but the uh, blue set is coupled with a green bowl, a yellow bowl, in the different sizes to create a set, a stacking set like this. Um, this. This is a promo piece 
It is something typically that you would see in a piece like this where the glass manufacturer has contracted with a local organization and um, made a limited supply to promote a specific event. Uh, some of these KitchenAid's bowls you'll see with spags on and the 250th anniversary. And I'll link more information about them in, a, in the description below. Um, this piece, while not a piece of Fire King, it is a piece of Macbeth Evans, also a Pennsylvania manufacturer glass manufacturer, uh, plate dated 1951. It is a very good example of how um, glass manufacturers in the Depression era and even up through the 60s and 70s um, and even into the 90s, I should say, uh, would take their glassware contract in order to sell a specific piece. They wouldn't make an entire line, an entire um, like mixing bowl set, but they would take one specific piece and place a promotion of some kind on it uh, for the guests or those attending. They also did this for employees of the plants, um, uh, people that maybe were artists, um, and creating some of the designs that you see on the wares. So those are pieces that are only beginning to be documented. Some of them have been documented in the references that we talked about, others are not. So just because you find a piece and it has something different on them, it ha if it has the characteristics that you see of the other pieces made by Fire King in this case, it's likely a, a promo piece made specifically for a specific business. So wanted to give a shout out for that. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, I think I have a sampling uh, I might be missing one or two of the patterns. I know I don't have samplings of all of the rare pieces, the gazelle, all of those things, but this gives you an idea of the shape and the variation of the pieces. So the most common and the the most um, desirable pieces that we're seeing right now are the shaker, grease jar, and mixing bowl sets. Um, individually or as the entire set. These start out at nine and a half inches, go to eight and a half, seven and a half, and five and a half inch. There is a four bowl set, and some people will often refer to the grease jar as a fifth bowl, which you could definitely use it just as a fifth bowl, but it is actually a bottom for a grease jar, which comes with this nice little knobbed lid. Lid. Uh, so the full set is a four side or four piece set, and uh, the smaller piece is the grease jar. Um, a couple other things manufactured in jadeite. There is a turquoise blue, and this this style of bowl is called a splash proof bowl, primarily because it's so deep. You could mix and mix and mix, and there was a less likelihood of the ingredients inside the bowl splashing out. Thus, the name Splash Proof Bowl. Um, they are, this bowl is, let me just get my ruler, almost six inches deep, the biggest one. So, for those of you that bake, you know how important that is. So, manufactured in jadeite, there is a blue, turquoise blue set available, and then you have the Colonial Bands pattern, Black Dot, the Apple Cherry set, KitchenAids, the Multicolored KitchenAid set, Red Dot, and the Tulip. Um, and like I said, there are some other pieces as well. There's a gold dot, there's blue gazelle, um, and there are different variations of these, again, that were sold as promotional pieces in wire carriers, um, all kinds of availability in those as well. So you may see them in different uh, variations. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, and I guess this is the best connection right here, these pieces were made in white and in ivory. And oftentimes I have seen some uh, on some of the uh, boards and social media platforms, um, influencers and so forth saying that the brighter white pieces are reproduced. And while there may be a reproduction out there, none that I'm aware of actually, I've never been able to find a direct link to a manufacturer 
manufacturing date, um, but lots of people have said that the bright white is reproduced. Um, these were manufactured in bright white and in ivory. Some of the patterns are more prevalent in white than in ivory, but predominantly, but you may see them in both pieces. Um, this tulip bowl is actually an ivory base here, and it would have gone with a set that would have had an ivory based grease jar and ivory based set of shakers. Um, the tulip shakers also have the tulip decals on the lid and on um and the green uh, yes on the lid of this jar um and on a different variation of the grease jar as well uh, but i wanted to point these out for now uh, primarily because we have the blue spags in the blue kitchen aids in stock it's going to a new home um, as of today but just wanted to share the blue is only available in the seven inch seven plus inch size bowl and it is stamped on the bottom as all are, you can see it's a faint stamp, but it is there. So um, most of your Fire King pieces are stamped. There are a few exclusions, but most of them are. Um, as far as wear and tear goes, these bowls hold up really well. Um, some of the decals though you will see, or some of the images you will see scratches on, depending on how they were cared for. There may be scratches in the white areas of the bowl. These are all from use. They were not made as decorator items. They were made to be used. And in most cases, they were used. Um, this one also, the grease are, you can also see the little scratch marks on the edge here. Um, there are some methods to clean those up if you're not going to use them. Um, I won't go into them here, but there are some options for cleaning and um, if, if those bother you. To me, they are seasoned, signs of seasoned use and wear, and they contribute to the patina of the pieces as well. So I think that is it as far as basic information on these sets. Again, um, the only thing I will touch upon is that because these are rare and uh, very desirable at the point, at this point, price fluctuations are all over the boards. And that is all determined by supply versus demand. Um, and this bowl in particular, the blue bowl in particular, um, recently sold for a um, never <laughs> sold before price, um, set a precedent for that, and that's fine. Uh, if a buyer is willing to purchase a price or pay the price and a seller is willing to sell it at that price, then that is their prerogative. So I'd really like to encourage everyone to be kind and respectful because you never know when you're going to be the one to own a bowl like this or any other rare piece of Fire King that may enable you to sell and set a new price as well. So give a shout out if you have questions. Enjoy your Fire King. I use mine daily and hope you will too. And um, I'd love to see any different pieces that you have or photos of your collections. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button to hear more uh, vintage tales and we'll catch you on the next one.